Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Math 1050. Today is April Fool's Day, but I'm not fooling around. This is act an actual lecture here. And we're looking at subtracting real numbers. So we, we talked about adding real numbers on uh, Monday, so now we're going to look at subtracting. And we know what subtracting looks like, A minus B. A is the minuend. B is the subtrahend. And then the answer is the difference. So for example, if we have 9 minus 2 equal to 7, 9 is the minuend, 2 is the subtrahend, and 7 is the difference. So you're saying, well, do I really have to know these words, minuend and subtrahend? I definitely am not going to ask you those words, and no other instructor is either. All the reason we're telling you that is just for a point of reference, and all of you do know that the answer is the difference because we did that when we initially started subtraction at the very beginning of the term. So now, now our world has gotten a lot bigger. We have both positive numbers and we have negative numbers. So when we do subtraction, we're going to rewrite our A minus B and we're going to write it as an addition problem because we all know how to add. So what you do is you change the sign of the subtrahend. So I'm changing it from positive to negative and then I'm changing the method, the um, action here from subtract to add. So the rule is change the sign of the subtrahend and add. Change the sign of the subtrahend and add. So you, you want to keep that in your mind so that every time you do a subtraction problem, that's what you're saying to yourself. Looking on page 636 is that what we have is, let me get back there, is that we have 6 minus 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that to add. So I have a positive 10. I'm going to change it to a negative 10. And now I have 6 plus a negative 10. And in your mind, you can do it whatever way you choose. You might rewrite it vertically like this. And then you would cover up the minus sign. And you would say 10 take away 6 is 4 but then you have to use the sign of the greater absolute value, and you get minus 4. So change the sign of the subtrahend and add. B, minus 2, minus 4. So this is my subtrahend. It is positive. I'm going to change it to negative. I'm going to change the sign of operation to add. And now I have minus 2 and negative 4. I'm going to add these, find the absolute sum, which is 6, use the sign uh, that's given, which is of, of the greater absolute value. Well, our signs are like now. These became like. So I just use the given sign. Up here, our signs were unlike. So I use the sign of the greater absolute value. Let's look at C. 
we have 3 minus a negative 5. And I would guess that most of you use that double negative rule, which I explained to you. And the double negative rule says if you have two consecutive minus signs like that, it becomes a plus. So we now have 3 plus 5, and our sum is 8. I can go through this whole process with you, but I'm sure that all of you do the double negative rule, which is right there. You do that. So now on page 637, let's look at number 3, and we'll look at 3a, which has 2 minus left bracket, minus 3 minus left parenthesis, 4 plus 6 right bracket. So we, we can't forget PEMDAS is that just because we have opposite signs, we still have to go inside. So I'm going to bring this down, 2 minus left bracket. I'm bringing that down, bringing this down. I go inside, and I get a 10. So now, inside my brackets, I now have a new problem. And the problem is subtract 10 from minus 3. So I'm going to follow the rule, change the sign of the subtrahend, change this sign, and now I rewrote it as an addition problem. So minus 3 minus 10 is negative 13. I now have 2 minus a negative 13. I have the double negative. That gives me a positive. 2 plus 13 is 15. So this, this one is, is definitely more involved. You probably should redo that to make sure you digested exactly what I did. Remember, this was step one. Then step two was to change the sign of the subtrahend. Let's look. Let's look at um, C. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit more involved because we have fractions. Minus 6 minus a negative 1 third, right bracket, minus 1 fourth. So I see what I can do. I want to go furthest most inside, and I see I have a double negative, which is a positive. And then I go inside, I have unlike denominators. So my, I have to change to like. One third equals two six. And now my problem becomes two six minus one six is one sixth. So I have one six minus one fourth. And now let's find a least common denominator. Well, we know that 4 times 6 is 24. That definitely will work. But we also see that 12 will work. So I'll multiply the 1 by 2. And I will multiply this by 3 here. So now I go from a subtraction problem to an addition problem. Remember what we do, we f find the absolute difference. 3 minus 2 is 1 12. Use the sign of the greater absolute value. So even though it involved fractions, all the denominators were easy to work with, and we have negative 12. Looking on down at D, 3 absolute value minus absolute value. So remember the horizontal lines, not horizontal, the vertical lines like that are absolute value. 
So we go inside first. I have a subtraction problem. I'm going to change it to addition. Change the sign of my subtrahend to negative. And now this becomes an addition problem. Here's our sign of operation. 4. My subtrahend is 12. I'm going to change it to minus 12. Change my sign of subtraction to add. I find the difference. 9 minus 6 is 3. Use the sign of the greater absolute value. Bring this down. Repeat. 12 minus 4 is 8. Use the sign of the greater absolute value. So let's look. We have to keep going here. Absolute value tells you that you take the positive, so I have a 3. I take the positive value, so I have a positive 3 there. So this is pretty tricky. It's not, that's an 8. It's not positive because I have two consecutive negatives. They aren't consecutive. Step 1 was I had to take the absolute value of minus 8, which is plus 8. Then step 2 was to subtract. 9 minus 8 is 1. Okay, so that one, of course, was the most uh, detailed and difficult to do. Let's see uh, what else. On page uh, 639, I would like to do number 5. Page 639, number 5. The highest elevation in Argentina is, is a mountain, and it is 6,960 meters above sea level. The lowest point in Argentina is 40 meters below sea level. So this is what I suggest, is always draw a picture. So here's sea level. Our mountain up here, this distance up here is 6960 meters. And then below sea level is exactly what it says, below sea level. So this is a distance of 40 to show that it's below what would be, this would be a zero. That's our level point, and so this would be negative 40. And the question says, find the difference between the highest and the lowest. So here's the highest. Here is the lowest. And I have subtract, and I have the lowest here. So this is below sea level. This tells me the word difference. That was the word difference. Now these are two consecutive negatives. I get a positive, which is going to give me 7,000 meters difference. So draw a picture when you can. Look at example 5 there with the thermometer, and it is a good, everybody's uh, you know, familiar with the thermometer, is that it gives you a good example right there. Let's look at the problem set page 640 and 641. And we'll start with number 14. And number 14 is uh, looking at 9 minus a negative 6. I'm going to use the two consecutive rule which changes it to positive, which gives me a positive 15. That is absolutely the easiest way to view that. Number 20, minus 7, minus a negative 16. So right here I have plus, minus 7, plus 16. 
I would simply go off to the side, I would write it the way I'm familiar with, and I would have a nine here is my answer. 24 minus 5, 6 minus 1 half. So we have a few things going on. We have fractions, unlike denominators, and subtraction of negative numbers. So uh, we can do a rewrite first, or we can go to a common denominator first. So if we go to a common denominator first, my common denominator is 6, and I end up with 3, 6. So my rewrite now becomes minus 5, 6. This is positive. I'm going to change it to a negative, change my subtraction sign to positive, and I now have minus 5, 6, minus 3, 6. I'm covering these up because I'm finding the absolute sum. I get negative 8, 6. I use the given sign. Am I done? Nope. I can reduce it to negative 4 thirds. So just an FYI here is that we can write negative 4 thirds and put the minus sign out front, or this is perfectly, safe, perfectly correct, you can put the minus 4 in the numerator. I tend to drag the sign with the numerator, or, but putting it in front of the fraction is 100% correct as well. So um, we can have all different kinds of things that we're adding. We can have, have decimals and so forth. Looking on, let's look at 32. I'm trying to pick ones that give you a variety. So if you're stuck on problem 31 or 33, you can look at problem 32 and see if that gave you any hints. We have 9 minus 3 minus 15. So just once again, if you're putting these in your calculator and it's shooting out the answer with the sign, you aren't learning. You have to know how to do it without using a calculator. Go inside, we have a 6 minus 15. I'm going to change this. This is positive. I'm going to change it to negative. I'll change the minus sign to a plus. So I went from subtract to add. I now have minus 15 plus 6. I find the absolute difference, and I'm going to use a minus sign there. Page 641, looking at problem number 52. Yes, and this one takes a little bit more time because we have fractions, but we've done plenty of work with fractions. And we have this, minus left paren, minus 1 eighth, minus 1 right paren. So, we can change all of these to denominators of 8, or we can work in the individual parentheses. I think that most of you would rather just stick inside here, and we'll change this to force. And as I said, I drag my minus sign in the numerator, and I'm going to change that to a 4, so I'll multiply that by a 2, and I get 10. Minus and here I have minus 1 eighth, and a 1 is equal to 8 eighths. Okay? So not too bad here. Change this. I need to change this to an addition problem, so I have minus 10 over 4. Go from minus to plus. You can put your parentheses like that. Minus. I have like signs now. So I have minus 1 eighth. I'm going to change this from uh, positive to negative, 8 eighths. And I'm going to change that to a positive. So I went from a subtraction to an addition problem. So here I have like signs, minus 3 fourths, minus 10 fourths. 
I find the absolute sum. I got minus 13 fourths. My signs are like. I find the absolute sum minus 9 eighths. And now I have unlike denominators. So I'll go to eighths. I have to multiply by 2, and I have minus 26. Two consecutive negatives is a positive, and I have 9 eighths. So minus 26 eighths plus 9 eighths is 26, my, I'm going to make it this way, is that 16 minus 9 is 7, you borrowed one, 17. I must use the sign of the greater absolute value. So that's going to give me minus 17 eighths. So we had a lot going on, unlike fractions, unlike denominators, subtract, change to add, and uh, we ended up getting our answer here. Let's look at, um, we just did problem 52. And let's look down now at uh, 58. Let's look at 58. So I have minus 4 minus left bracket, 6 minus 9 minus left parenthesis, minus 7 minus 4 right parenthesis. And so this one's not bad. We don't have fractions. All we have to do is think about our, our signs. So this, just you're bringing it down, you're bringing this down. Left bracket, go inside, write this as an addition problem. We changed the sign of the subtrahend, we went from subtract to add. Bring this down. I'm adding like signs here. I changed the sign of the subtrahend, and I went to addition. Left bracket, 6 minus 3 is 3, minus, minus 7 minus 4. We find the absolute sum. We use the given sign. So now we have... 3 plus 11, which is minus 4 minus 14. I have like signs. I change the sign of the subtrahend. Go to add. Minus 14 minus 4. The absolute sum. Use the given sign. Okay? I am doing absolutely every single step. I think you should as well when you're doing subtraction and you're doing sign numbers. It just gets you uh, into too much trouble when you skip steps, seriously, okay? And then look at, um, let's look at number 68, please. And the question says, the difference of 7 and minus 14. So this is what I would do, is I would think of my thermometer here. And here's my 0, and 7 is up here, and minus 14 is down here. So I really want to know that whole distance there. That's what it's asking me to do. So difference tells me to subtract minus a negative 14. Two consecutive negatives is a positive, and my difference is 21. We're not given any units of measure, but that was what the question said, was to find the difference. How are you doing? I hope that you are, um, when you watch these videos, you have your book next to you, you're following, maybe you're marking in your book the numbers that we're doing, you can watch the video or you can go over the notes and then you can go down one by one by one. If we were in class, I would be walking around the room and I could see exactly what you're doing.
that brings us to um, multiplying and dividing real numbers. So we got the hard one out of the way. Subtracting real numbers is the more challenging one. Multiplying and dividing real numbers, let's see, 9.6 is multiply, yes, okay, multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing is the easier of the two, of the operations. So multiply and divide real numbers. Okay? This is how easy it is. On page 645, the rules, you have to know this, but it's so simple. The product of two numbers with the same sign is positive if the numbers have the same sign it's positive and the product of two numbers with unlike signs is negative. Unlike signs, like signs. Okay? Example. 3 times 5 is 15. Two positives gives me a positive. Minus 4 times negative 6. The signs are like. The positive is product, is positive. 7 times negative 2. The signs are unlike. The product is negative. Minus 9 times positive 3. The signs are unlike. The product is negative. So it, it, it is definitely very, very easy compared to subtracting. Let's look on page, um, let's look at uh, page 644. And I would, if I, we were in class, I would be asking, calling on you by name because you could do these in your head. And we have seven times negative eight. So remember, 56 is part of the answer, but a very important part is telling, determining is it a positive 56 or a negative. These are unlike, so our product is negative. B, minus 9 times 2. I know the product is 18. I have 1 negative sign, or you could say the signs are unlike, so it is negative 18. Minus 16 over 1 times 5 over 32. 16 divides itself once, and 32 two times. I get 5 over 2. The signs are unlike, so my product is minus 5 halves. So really quite, quite easy for you compared to other things that we have been doing. Over on page 645, A, 3A, we have minus 5 times negative 6. We know the product is 30. Is it a positive or a negative? The signs are like. It is positive. B minus 7 times negative 3. My signs are like. It has to be a positive 21. Do I have to put that plus sign in front of it? Absolutely no. 
minus one seventh times negative five over two i'm going to get five over fourteen my signs are like it is positive and then the decimal ones you can do on your own uh, with your calculator just recall or just know is that when you multiply by zero the product is zero example seven times zero is zero minus four over three times zero is zero so if we multiply by zero our product is zero completely now let's look at another word we're going to look at the word reciprocal or make it plural reciprocals reciprocals are pairs of numbers whose product is one are called reciprocals pairs of numbers whose product is one why don't I just end right there and that becomes reciprocals example five the reciprocal of five is one-fifth the product is one if we have minus one nine times negative nine they are reciprocals I have two negatives the product is one zero has no reciprocal why not why not because if we flip it over we get one over zero and remember zero in the denominator is undefined looking at uh, okay so now we want to look at uh, dividing by real numbers dividing real numbers and the rule is exactly the same is that I gave you that if you divide two numbers whose signs are like the quotient is positive if we divide them and they're unlike it is negative here oh I guess I did not give it to you I just gave you product I did not give you uh, division yet so let's look let's state that in division as well and that should be uh, I don't know if your author gives you that hint or not yes he does on page 646 and he says the quotient of two numbers with the same sign is positive and the quotient of two numbers with unlike signs is negative so very easy to work with here multiply and divide are easy but you still have to do them folks we always have to practice page 647 number 5 minus 8 over negative 2 my signs are like my quotient is 4 the sign is positive B 12 over negative 4 I know my quotient is 3 but I'm saying well now should it be positive or should it be negative well 
the signs are unlike, so the quotient is negative. And let's look at D, one-fourth divided by negative two-thirds. So remember, to divide, we invert the divisor, which means flip it over, and we go from divide to multiply. So three times one, four times two, my signs are unlike, so we have minus three eighths. Let's see if there's something else here. And of course, six A and B, I asked you this question on exam one, but the, um, we, we weren't dealing with negative numbers, but we cannot divide by zero and it is undefined. And then B, zero over minus 53 is zero indeed. Let's look at the problem set for 9.6. I mean, these problems can get as, um, as involved as we want them to be. Uh, I see that there's a lot of substituting in as well here. So let's look. Is he doing algebraic substituting in here? It's a big section. So. Let's look. Let's look in the problem set here. Is that we're on pages 652 and 653? And on page 652, number 14, 0 times negative 12. Okay, folks, 0 times any number is what? It has to be 0. 26, make sure you have that under your hat. Number 26, negative 4.6 divided by 0 0.23. So you can decide the sign first if you want, is that we have unlike signs, so we know it's going to be negative, and then you can do the actual dividing second. So. Remember, this is the divisor. You move it two places, you move it two places, and the decimal point goes there. So 23 goes into 46 two times. When you subtract, bring down your zero. 23 into zero goes zero. So my answer is negative 20, negative 20. So from now on, the sign is part of the answer, and the numeric part is part of the answer as well. Number 30. Oh, well, this is a freebie. If we have no candy and we divide it by minus 5, there's just it ends up to be zero again. 36 minus 3 sixteenths divided by negative 5 eighths. So to go from divide to multiply, I have a reciprocal and I change this from divide to multiply. So I think I'll determine the sign first. I'm multiplying like signs, so my product is positive. 8 goes into itself once and into 16 twice, and I get 3 tenths, okay? A minus times a minus is a plus. So there's several parts to this question. You have to do the reciprocal. You have to know the sign. 
reduce your numbers and you get a product as well. So now minus 8 plus 4 left paren 5 minus 7. I go inside and remember we have 5 plus negative 7 minus 7, whoops, let me do it this way, minus 7 plus 5. My difference is 2. I use the sign of the greater absolute value. Minus 8 minus 8. Write it as an addition problem and we get minus 16. Let's look. Uh, I have 58 here, and that's minus 8 minus absolute value, all divided by minus 3 minus 6. So just as we said before, a fraction, the numerator is its own problem. So I have minus 8. I'm going to bring over that minus sign, left part of my absolute value. And at this point, I mean, we've done so many of these, I hope that you see minus 3 plus 2 would give us negative 1. Okay? Sticking with the numerator, I have minus... The absolute value of minus 1 is positive 1. In the denominator, we have minus 3 plus negative 6. I'm adding two numbers with like signs. I get minus 9. In the numerator, minus 8 plus negative 1 is minus 9 over negative 9 is positive 1. Uh, here's one you probably could spend a little bit of time redoing it just because there's so much going on in that problem. Okay, uh, this section is uh, pretty big. I probably won't ask you to do any problems 59 through, uh, 59 through 64. Those are... Uh, pretty involved, so our homework won't include those problems. But now our world has gotten so much bigger because when we evaluate, we aren't confined to just positive numbers. We can use x equal to 6, y equal to negative 4, and a equal to 3. So we now have introduced negative numbers into our evaluating. Number 66, 5x minus 2y plus 3a. So we've talked about evaluating in length. All of you know how to do it. I'm going to put the 6 in. I'm going to put the negative 4 in. I'm going to put in a positive 3. 30, I need to know two negatives become a positive plus 9. So 38 plus 9 is 47. Okay? So no, you can't be putting this in your calculator and getting, um, you know, to get the answers because if you do that, when we get to the other algebraic piece, you won't know how to work with the signs. And when you get to Math 1100, you won't know how to work with the signs either. So don't do yourself a disservice. It is um, learning, you know, is a situation where it builds on blocks. You, you have to know something from Math 1050. Okay? Now look at um, some of these uh, little expressions are a little bit too difficult. Some we can work on. Working on number 78, the product of minus 9 and 2 
added to 9. Okay? So let's look at the product of minus 9 and 2. That's my product. It tells me added. So I'm going to add, and I'm going to add it to a 9. Okay? Or the 9 can be behind. It can be in front. Uh, 9 minus 9 times 2 is 100% accurate as well. Depends on just how you see it. Minus 18 plus 9, my signs are opposite. I will find the difference. Use the sign of the greater absolute value. So 9 minus 9 plus a negative 18 gives me minus 9. So uh, we have to understand the vocabulary. I'm encouraging you to write it out and to substitute in some of your sign values. Some of them are just too hard. Um, I will select the ones that are a little bit easier and that you would be responsible for. So I'm not going to ask you for sure 85 on down. Uh, we really didn't do much uh, with percents and so forth, so I'm not going to badger you with that. This, uh, and I'll make it down to 92, I guess. Uh, 94 is pretty reasonable. 7 times a number is negative 42. So 7 times means to multiply. My number is x. Is is an equal sign, negative 42. 7x equals minus 42. Okay? So multiply and divide is just quite a bit easier than um, adding and subtracting. Let's look then at 9.7. This is a pretty dry section, properties of real numbers. Uh, not much I can do to make this uh, interesting because it's a bunch of vocabulary more of understanding than it is uh, there's really not computation just understanding so uh, and we have to know some of these properties to take with you to math 1100 you're going to get them in that class and then there will be things that will be added on so let's look don't fight it as I said commutative Commutative property. Well, actually, I'm going to, it's actually c properties because I'll do both of them at the same time. I'll do both uh, addition and multiply. Commutative means order, means order. So I'm looking at real numbers. And I'm looking at real numbers A and B. So what the commutative property says is this. A plus B equals B plus A. I can add in any order. So this is the commutative property of addition. Example. 4 plus 7 equals 7 plus 4. So you knew this part. You probably are not familiar with the word commutative. What about multiplying? I can multiply AB or I can multiply BA. So what we're saying here is 3 times 9 equals 9 times 3. Also, name this minus 3 plus 10 equals 10 plus a minus 3. So I would have this written down. 
and um, I would have you name that property and you would say commutative property of addition. Commutative property of addition. I would say minus 9 times 2 equals 2 times negative 9. You would say, okay, it makes no difference what order I multiply in. So this is commutative property of multiplication. Okay, so I want you to give me the name of the property, and I want you to tell me if it's add or if it is multiply. Now, look at the next one. Associative properties. Associative properties. Associative refers to grouping. So if we're going to group, we need more than two terms. For commutative, two terms was enough. Two numbers was enough. Associative, we need three. And we need to be able to group. So the um, associative property of addition, A plus B plus C, see my grouping symbols? I can just move them, and I'm going to get A plus left paren B plus C. Okay? This is addition. Example would be, 2 plus 5 plus 3, I'm going to just move the grouping symbols and group it around the 5 and the 3, and this is associative property of addition. Because I'm grouping, I have parentheses. If I have AB times C equals A times BC, this is multiplication. Example, 7 times 10 times 9. Instead of having the grouping symbols around 7 and 10, I'm going to have them around 10 and 9. And it looks like that. So, so far, commutative is order, we can multiply or add in any order. Associative is grouping, we must have parentheses. Let's look on page 657. Let's look at problem number two. It said decide if this is commutative or associative or both. So on A, two times, four times, 6 equals 2 times 4 times 6. Okay, I have three terms. I moved my parentheses. This is grouping. So it's the associative property of multiplication. Okay. Now, the B one is a little confusing here. Um, let me show you why. Well, we want to know what's different between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Okay, the sixes are in exactly the right position, but we look inside the parentheses. Here we have 2 times 4, and here we have 4. 4 times 2. So does everybody agree 2 times 4 is 8, 4 times 2 is 8? That referred to order. So ignore those parentheses because the 6s are like. All we did was we switched these around. So that is commutative property of multiplication. So usually on the test, if you give me commutative property, that is good, but 
if you don't give me a multiplication, I do take off a half a point, okay? So you want to tell me if it is addition or if it is multiplication, okay? Uh, number four, find each sum or product. So on that one, not quite sure what he's getting at, but just add and part B, multiply. That would be what he's basically looking for. There are, he's giving us quite a few properties here, quite a few. So let's look at this one, the identity properties. So just think of that word, try, you know, it's kind of like you're on Jeopardy and they give them a hint in the question so that they have an idea of, of what they're coming up with. So we're thinking identity, we need identical. So let's just think about that. What would we add to A in order to get A? Well, we'd have to add a zero. So we can add in any order, so it can be this. And this is addition. So example, minus three plus zero is negative three. So what I would say is the additive identity is zero because we're adding. And now let's think of this, identical, that's the word. So what should I multiply A by in order to get A? Well, I have to multiply it by one. So A times one is one, and one times A, excuse me, I, that wasn't correct. A times one is A, and one times A is A. Example. If I have minus 8 times 1, I'm going to get minus 8. You get identically the same number that you started with. Okay, so look at the word to see if it gives us a, a hint. On page 658, well, this is pretty easy. The identity element is at 5a. We see that 9 plus 0 is 9. You're going to get identically the same answer. And we see that on b, blank plus minus 7 equals minus 7. It has to be 0 as well. Okay. Um, so now we are down to the inverse properties. So that word inverse now is giving us a big hint. This tells me I want to go back to zero or I want to go back to positive one. So a plus negative a is zero or minus a plus a is zero. Example, 14 plus minus 14 is zero. Remember, we were talking about inverses before, and we said change the sign. So this sign is changed from this. And this is called the additive inverse, that if you change the sign, if you, um, and let's look at a times one over a, the a's are gonna cancel, we get a one, or if we have one over a times a, we get a one. Example, 16 times one over 16, the 16 cancel, and you get one inverse properties. So minus a is the additive inverse, the opposite. 
minus a is the additive inverse, and 1 over a is the multiplicative inverse. And 1 over a is multiplicative inverse. Okay, and over here I gave my numeric examples. And then we have one called the distributive property. And there's actually, um, you can say more than this. You can call it the distributive property of multiplication over addition. Um, yes, or yes. So, and let me give you an example of that. A left paren B plus C. And what we're going to do is I'm going to distribute that A o times that B. I get AB, and then I'm going to do it um, I, with the C and get AC. And what we say here is the distributive property of multiplication, because that's what I'm doing, over addition. And this addition can be either addition or subtraction. It doesn't make any difference here. It can be addition or subtraction. Uh, for example, it can be A times B minus C, and that will give me AB minus AC. And this would be over subtraction here. Okay. So there's a lot of key words. Do you see I'm distributing? I'm taking that A over everything that follows it. So the, um, you should get some hints there for sure. Looking at um, page 659, number 8, I'm looking at A. What would we add to 275 to get 275? The only thing we could add would be the additive identity 0. And then what would we do on D? We want to go from 2 fifths. We want to multiply it times something, come out with 2 fifths. I have to multiply it times the multiplicative identity there. Okay. Let's see uh, what all the, um, oh, we have some information here to help us out, is that with the distributive property, he shows us how we can use it, not just memorize it. But let's look at this. Let's look on page 660, and let's look at 9, 9A, 2, left paren, P plus 5. And the question says, use the distributive property. So I'm going to have 2P, my sign here is positive, and then I'm going to have 2 times 5, okay? And... Um, Of course, we can simplify that to 10, but I was just showing you how to, what's happening here. B, so important, so important to know how to distribute. Minus 4 left paren y plus 7, so I'm going to take the minus 4y plus minus 4 times 7. This is not necessary. It depends on if you want to do it or not. You can um, just leave it without it. Um, so I have minus 4y here. I have a negative product, 28, and it looks like that, distributing. On C, 
5, left paren m minus 4. So when I distribute, we get 5m, and I always write it plus 5 times negative 4. Everybody does not do that, and then I get 5m minus 20. Okay? So a lot of people are just going to go straight from here to here. I'm not going to count off for that. I'm just trying to show you all the steps. Okay? Looking on down, this distributing is very, very important. So page 660, very important. Minus 2 thirds, left paren, 6x minus 3. So now we have minus 2 thirds, you can write it 6x over 1 minus 2 thirds minus 3 over 1. So 3 goes into 6 two times. We get minus 4x. The 3's cancel. You're looking at minus 2 times negative 1. Two like signs gives me a positive. Minus 4x plus 2. Now, we're not restricted to two terms. We can have a whole series of terms in the uh, parentheses, like this. And you just keep distributing. It becomes 7 times 2y plus 7 times 7k plus 7 times minus 9m. Do you have to do those steps? I think you should do them initially until you get to math 1100. You should do them. So now I'll have 14y plus 49k minus 63m. If you show the steps, um, you're in great shape. This is probably the most troublesome. Our questions like this, and of course these are on standardized tests questions like this. This minus sign here says opposite. So it's telling you the opposite of everything inside there. Okay? So the opposite of 2 is negative 2. The opposite of negative r is positive r. So that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is this way. We can think, well, I can put a 1 there because 1 is not going to change anything. And that becomes minus 1 times 2 minus 1 times negative r. Minus 2, 2 negatives is a positive. So I have to get the same answer, but you need to pick the way that works for you. You need to pick the way that works for you. I have students who will change the first number here and they forget to change the second one. So you don't want to be in that group. So here we're going to have opposite. So the opposite of negative is positive, 5y. The opposite of 8 is negative 8. Or minus 1 times minus 5y plus 8 minus 1 times negative 5y minus 1 times 8 gives me 5y minus 8, okay? So these answers are identical. Once again, you pick as to how you think about it. But um, this is always a trouble spot for students, not just in Math 1050, but in all the algebra classes. When the minus sign is in front of the parentheses, that seems to cause quite a few issues there. Okay, let me check in here. Let me see if I lost anything here.
class. Um, I lost my computer, and I don't know uh, where you did uh, where it turned off. I kept moving this mouse so that it wouldn't shut off, but evidently it did shut off, and I have no idea if the college has it timed or what, but I've been moving my mouse crazy like to make sure it wouldn't do that. So if there is a little bit piece missing, please go, please go to, um, I wonder how much is missing here. Please go to uh, the uh, posted notes in D2L for missing problems because before I um, leave today, I wouldn't have time to watch this whole, um, whole video uh, to see how much is missing. But uh, now that I think about it, there might have been a little bit missing. So I don't know what's going on. Yesterday I lost a whole big portion and then I had to redo the whole thing. So um, please consult your notes for missing explanations. If anybody has a question, you can just email it me and say, you're missing uh, all these you know, problems, tell me what numbers or what pages, and then I can redo that part of the video and, and just post that piece of it. But um, quite annoying when the computer shuts off on me like this because I'm not aware of it immediately. There's no signal or anything that's helping me out here. So let's look at um, some problems. Uh, we are, all of these are the properties. You can do that. You know how to do that. Looking on page 665, most of it is the distributive property here, and yes, that, that is a very important piece of math. Number 78, left paren x minus 6. I'm going to distribute this, and I get 8x plus 8 times minus 6 is 8x minus 48. Number 74, we can't ignore fractions. So we have minus one third left paren, 9x plus 5, and that gives me minus one third, 9x over 1, minus one third times 5. So I have one negative sign, so I know the product is negative. 3 into 9 goes 3 times. I have one negative sign, 3 does not go into 5, so I have this right here. And that, that's our final answer. We don't have to do anything with that at all. 80, distributing a negative number, you have to be careful because students don't change the second sign, minus 4 times 3x minus 4 times minus 2. Minus 12x plus 8 is the final answer here. And then we're not restricted to two terms. We can have many terms. 2x minus 5y plus 6z. And I'm going to distribute the minus 5 times the 2x minus 5 times negative 5y minus 5 times 6z. One negative, so it's negative. Two negatives, it's positive. One negative, it's negative. And I have that. Okay? So the next group of problems, 89 down, it says write them without parentheses. What that means is simply multiply. Problems 89 through 96 just means to multiply. He said without parentheses. So 
So let's look at problem number 92. We have the opposite of 9x plus 12y. So I'm going to distribute that over and over. I get minus 9x minus 12y. Or you can write it with a minus 1 in there. It's your call. So today was April 1st. Uh, we completed 9-6. Uh, Homework is 9-6, 9-7. Let's see, what else? Did I did 9-5. 9.6 and 9.7 is the homework. Do the odds. As I keep saying, I will post homework a homework assignment uh, when I have time. Right now I'm just trying to get through lectures, but all of you know to do the odd problems and to keep up. So this was for April 1st. And uh, that's a Wednesday. All of you have a good weekend. I wish you could just tell me, hey, I'm losing the sound over there, so your computer went off, but I have no way of knowing until I see a blank screen. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you are attentive at home. Hope you are concentrating on what you're doing. And um, don't forget to check both D2L and uh, check your OCC email. Thank you. Have a great weekend.